Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have focused on risk minimization and sharp ratio maximization for a two asset portfolio. In this video, we are going to conclude our discussion on optimum portfolio weights by considering a portfolio of n assets and arriving at a vector of optimum portfolio weights for a portfolio of n assets. For this, we will continue to work with the sharp ratio, this one here. Though we could also arrive at the same result by maximizing the investor utility function, which I'm going to leave it to you for your own practice. We could also arrive at the same result by minimizing risk subject to a given level of return, for which you can watch my three videos on the global minimum variance. To proceed forward, we will use matrices and matrix differentiation to maximize the sharp ratio with respect to weights. We use matrices because it is going to be easier to express the weights and returns of many assets as vectors. In later videos, we are going to use Excel to optimize the portfolio, but for now, we focus on the theory and the mechanism. Looks like my phone is ringing, but I'm going to ignore that for the time being. So let us begin by expressing our problem. Our problem is to maximize the sharp ratio. So let us write that. Maximize the sharp ratio with respect to weights. We saw that in a previous video as well. So I'm just writing the same thing. So far, nothing is new. And we have a constraint that all the weights must be equal to 1. Let us uh, now invoke matrices and see how our excess return this part here, the numerator of the sharp ratio is going to look like. For a portfolio of n assets, let us first of all write the expected return minus RF the usual way. Let us say we have n assets, so we invest W1 proportion in the first asset times the return on the first asset minus the risk free rate plus we invest some more money in the second asset times the return on the second asset minus the risk free rate and we could go on till the nth asset if we want to express this thing in matrices we are going to write a weight vector And we are going to call it W. So whenever you see W from now on, it's a vector. And it's going to look like this. You write down all your weights. And you can go on W1, W2 till Wn. We can also write the return vector. In this vector, you could write R1, R2, and you could go on till Rn, which means that our excess return can be simply written as the transpose of the weight vector times the return vector. I should have written here the excess returns. So read this as excess returns. R1 minus RF, R2 minus RF, and it goes on till Rn minus RF. So the same thing we can write here. We also know from a previous video that the standard deviation of the portfolio can be written in matrix format as this. So let me remind you of that. If you want to find the standard deviation, what you need to do is to multiply the transpose of the weight vector by the variance covariance matrix 
which we can call s but this is this s is different from this um, sharp ratio s here and you multiply this by the weight vector again if you leave it here you have the variance and if you take the square root you get the standard deviation this means now that our problem the maximization problem can be written as follows we want to maximize our sharp ratio with respect to weights and let us now write the sharp ratio in matrix format this is our excess return w transpose times r i minus r f and in the denominator we write the standard deviation w transpose times variance covariance matrix times w raised to the power of half and we have a constraint that all the weights must be equal to 1 so we can write that here as w transpose times 1 is equal to 1 now let us manipulate the sharp ratio a little bit I'm going to take the standard deviation onto the numerator so that when it goes there it's going to get multiplied and the power is going to become negative so that's exactly what I'm doing here I'm writing the excess return W transpose times RI minus RF and this is now going to be multiplied by W transpose times the variance covariance matrix times W raised to the power of half we are now going to take the partial we are going to actually take the derivative of uh, the sharp ratio with respect to weights the weight vector so as in the previous video we are seeing the same thing that we have two functions and we have a product of them so following the methodology from the previous video we are going to differentiate so we are going to write the first function as it is which is w transpose times r i minus r f and we are going to multiply it with the derivative of the second function but in the second function here we see that a function has been raised to, the, to a power so therefore we are going to have to use the chain rule so let us start a bracket and start differentiating minus half times the inside function as it is and then minus half minus 1 this is going to give us minus 3 over 2 as it did in the previous video times the derivative of the inside function again when we are differentiating matrices or when we are writing things in matrix format please remember that W transpose or the transpose of any matrix multiplied by the original matrix is equivalent to saying the square of that mat that quantity so W transpose times W is nothing but equal to W squared this means we have W squared times the variance covariance matrix here so what we are going to get when we take the derivative we are going to get a 2 the weight vector and the variance covariance matrix S yes. we close the bracket so we have done the first part of the product rule now plus we are going to have to write the second function this one as it is so let us do that and we are going to multiply this with the derivative of the first function which is this if we take the derivative of this function with respect to W what we're going to get is R I minus R F so we're going to write that here R I minus R F we want to maximize our sharp ratio so we set this derivative equal to 0 and just like we did in the previous video because we want to get rid of this minus 3 over 2 we are going to multiply throughout
by W transpose times S times W to the power of half. Let us see what happens when we do that. We have two terms. Let me highlight them. This one. And then we have this term here. So let us see what's going to happen. Let me change color one more time to come back to yellow. When the first term, this one, is multiplied throughout by this item here, these powers are going to get added. So therefore, in the numerator here, we are going to be left with a minus 1. So let us write that down quickly. So we begin with W transpose times RI minus RF. multiplied by inside the bracket now we have minus and let us see if we need to write minus 1 over 2 we see that there's a 2 here and there's a 2 here so they are going to cancel out so we don't need to write minus 1 over 2 just a minus sign would be enough so minus W transpose times S times W and this is now going to be raised to minus 1 multiplied by W S close brackets and then we look at the second term this one here so in this term we have a minus 1 over 2 power with this item and when this is multiplied by this what we're going to have is an exponent of 0 so this item here is going to become 1 and 1 times Ri minus Rf is going to give us Ri minus Rf. So we can write that. Right hand side is 0. Now let us see what we can possibly do. Let us isolate Ri minus Rf. So on the left hand side, I only want to write Ri minus Rf which means all the other things, all the other stuff, this one here, I'm going to take it over to the right hand side. When it goes to the right hand side, we write W transpose times RI minus RF. And this minus is no longer going to remain minus, this is going to become plus. So inside the bracket, we are going to have W transpose times S times W to the power of minus 1 times WS. Let us continue. RI minus RF is going to be equal to W transpose times RI minus RF. And we can write this in a fraction. We can write this as times WS over W transpose times S times W. So this means what we have on the numerator is W transpose times RI minus RF times WS divided by W transpose times S times W. We are going to do a little manipulation here. So let me change color and tell you what we are going to do. This part here we are going to give it a name. We are going to call it A. We are going to call this A and this can be considered as the price of risk. If you look at it closely, you are going to realize that the numerator is just the excess return and the denominator is the volatility. It is telling us that for this unit of volatility, what is the excess return that we are expecting or demanding. So this is basically the price of risk 
which we are giving a name A so that we don't have to write this all over again and again. So let us see what we have now. So we are going to have Ri minus Rf equals A times W times S. This has become much more manageable. Now what we are going to do is to get rid of this variance covariance matrix and we can do that by pre multiplying both sides by S inverse so let's do that so on the left hand side we have S inverse times RI minus RF and on the right hand side we have A times the W vector times S inverse times S which means that S inverse times Ri minus Rf is equal to A times W. Please do keep in mind that this S is the variance covariance matrix not the sharp ratio. I should have actually used a different letter but since we started off this way it's important that I point it out to you. Now let us do one more thing. Let us call this quantity Z and let us call this quantity also Z. What does this mean? This means that Z is equal to S inverse times Ri minus Rf and Z is also equal to A times the weight vector. Let us look at this item here. We can very easily see that the weight vector W varies in proportion with Z. So if we know Z we can find the weights very easily. We also know that Z is also equal to this. So by using this formulation we can find out the values in the z vector so there are there is going to be a z vector so you're going to have in that vector z1 z2 z3 and so on till zn for an, an asset portfolio so if we note down all the zi's and divide each zi by the sum of all zi's we are going to get our weight vector let me write it down for you the weight vector or each weight in the weight vector is going to be equal to each zi and we divide each zi with the sum of all zi's. We are doing this so that the weights can be scaled to 1. This process is also known as normalizing the z. So we are going to get a weight vector here so if you are looking at it in matrix format this might be your weight vector let's say there are just two assets so this is going to be your weight vector and here you might have your z vector where you might have the values of z1 and z2 so if you want to find out the weight on the first asset you simply write down z1 and divide it by a sum of Z1 plus Z2. W2 would be equal to Z2 over Z1 plus Z2 or 1 minus W1 if you are if you're looking at a two asset portfolio. Otherwise if there was a third asset this would be its weight. So this is how we can maximize the Sharpe ratio and find the optimal portfolio weights. In the next video, we will use this mechanism to calculate the optimum portfolio weights in Excel. See you then.